Now, I'm all for getting people with business experience into government. That's especially true for positions that affect policy towards the private sector. You want people who know what they're talking about. But the American people also want to know that when business leaders serve in government, they're representing the interests of all American business, not just their own business. Guess who co-founded the shipping firm bringing steel here from South Korea, Nautical Bulk Holdings, and who remains an owner? It's kind of unbelievable, even for regular viewers of Swamp Watch, but the answer is Wilbur Ross. He's negotiating over South Korean steel imports while making money from importing South Korean steel. Did Wilbur Ross tell President Trump about these conflicts? Does the president know that the man negotiating tariffs designed to protect American workers from imports is making money from shipping those imports to America? Last week, we told you that Wilbur Ross owns stakes in Nautical Bulk Holdings, which does significant business delivering South Korean steel, subject to Commerce Department tariff negotiations. We told you he owns stakes in the Transportation Recovery Fund, which ships auto parts that could be hit by President Trump's promised auto tariffs. We told you he also owns stakes in Navigator Holdings, an oil and gas shipping firm whose clients include a major Turkish oil company that could be affected by sanctions being considered by the Commerce Department. We told you that he partially owns Diamond S Shipping, which has a long list of clients whose business could be affected by Commerce Department policy, including Chinese state-owned oil company PetroChina. We told you that in November 2017, eight months after joining the administration, Ross pledged to divest from his ownership of Navigator Holdings and Diamond S Shipping. But we told you accurately that there was no evidence he'd done that. We told you that Ross's chief of staff, Wendy Terramoto, is still, as far as we know, listed as a director at Nautical Bulk Shipping, a company tied to Nautical Bulk Holdings. In response to all this, Secretary Ross's office contacted us after the show and provided us the following statement, which addresses some, but not all, of what we reported. Listen carefully. First, the issue of divestments and the Secretary's chief of staff. Quote, Secretary Ross has fully divested in accordance with his ethics agreement filed with the Office of Government Ethics and has also divested of Navigator and other assets, even though not required to do so under his ethics agreement. He continues to seek out and follow the guidance of Department of Commerce ethics officials to ensure compliance with federal regulations. For the assets the Secretary owns, ethics officials have not found Section 232 investigations or general trade negotiations to have a direct and predictable effect on those assets, which is the legal standard. Additionally, Wendy Terramoto resigned from all boards prior to becoming Chief of Staff. Right, a few points here. First, his statement only refers to divestment of one of the two companies we mentioned. Secondly, here's the website where such divestments would and should be listed as required. The latest transaction listed is in November 2017 and reports sales of Sun Bancorp, an unrelated company. No transactions have been posted since, including any related to the sale of Navigator Holdings or Diamond Shipping, as Wilbur Ross had promised. We say clearly tonight, if there is evidence of Secretary Ross's divestments, show it to us. You've had a week and we will happily show our viewers. On his chief of staff, again, Wendy Terramoto's name remains listed tonight as director at Nautical Bulk Shipping on this Government of Bermuda website. Bermuda's where the company's based. On the rest of our report, Secretary Ross's office says, quote, much of this report is based on half-truths, falsehoods, and assumptions that frankly do not make much sense. In a few words, both Mr. Hilton and GAI conflated shipments with ships. The two are not the same. One ship can carry hundreds or even thousands of so-called shipments, and the shipments noted represent a fraction of the ship's total use. Additionally, the Secretary holds a small percentage interest in a fund which in turn has partial ownership of nautical holdings. Note that the Secretary's own statement confirms the central conflict of interest here. That with one hand, Wilbur Ross partially owns a company that ships South Korean steel to the US, and with the other hand, he's negotiating tariffs on South Korean steel imports. Wilbur Ross also added, the secretary will continue to implement the president's bold trade agenda focused on righting the wrongs committed against both our American workers and our country's national security under previous administrations. Let me repeat, I am all for successful and experienced business people like Wilbur Ross serving in government. That's good. What's not good is when they hide behind pathetic, swampy ethics rules that a child could see through. In this case, they are literally claiming that negotiations on steel tariffs don't affect a company that imports steel. 
You can argue all day about what constitutes a shipment and how much steel is in a shipment, but you're still shipping steel. They also argue that potential oil sanctions on Venezuela don't affect a company that ships oil from Venezuela. This is the kind of legalistic BS we got from the crooked Clintons. When you're serving in the administration of a president who was elected to drain the swamp, we expect a higher standard. I read all your tweets about this last week and some of you suggested we had made a mistake because Wilbur Ross's interests are in a blind trust which would remove any potential conflicts of interest. Well, we looked into that and I'm afraid it's not the case. This is Secretary Ross's official ethics agreement with the Office of Government Ethics. This is where any relevant blind trust would be listed but the document never mentions any blind trust. The truth is, the Office of Government Ethics is a swampy joke. It allowed Bill Clinton to make millions in speaking fees from foreign entities while his wife was Secretary of State. It allowed President Obama's Commerce Secretary, Penny Pritzker, to hand out a $10 million grant to a company co-chaired by her own cousin. You know our promise to you on this show. Drain the Swamp was one of Donald Trump's most important promises. And we will hold everyone to account for cronyism, corruption and conflicts of interest without fear or favour. The Office of Government Ethics needs a complete overhaul and we will get to that on another night. In the meantime, a message to Wilbur Ross, who, by the way, we've repeatedly invited on the show to discuss all this. Secretary Ross, as you know better than most, in the business world, there is a very clear standard for conflicts of interest like these. You recuse yourself from any relevant decision-making. Please, Mr. Secretary, do the right thing.